What's up, guys? It's the Oblivion Override team here. Hello for the first time and welcome to our first ever dev blog today. In our previous Steam post, we teased some concept art for our stage four map, and we hope that has got you excited already. Great. Uh, but hey, we've got something bigger to share today. Let's get into it. So this is something we've been preparing for a while. And we're super pumped to finally share this with you all today. I We will officially launch into full release in the next year, bringing along some new features, including the addition of stage four final boss and a new female mecha. I renote. It's been a long journey since the launch of our AA. Big thanks to every one of you for the valuable feedback. Oblivion wouldn't be the game it is today without it. In the 1.0 release, we're all about level up. The gameplay and combat experience, and now join us on exploring things we've changed and the new features we've added to the game. Let's dive right in. So let's start with early game changes. So a lot of you brought up how the early game could have been more accessible uh, with a lot of item skills being locked at the beginning stages. You're not wrong. Character progression has been a bit of slow burn in the current patch, and we totally hear you on that. To address this, we're making killing bosses much more rewarding in 1.0. You could expect a boost in Nazis and weapon drops after defeating them. We're also slashing the total nanites needed for talent upgrades at the talent chair from 8,000 to 6,000. So you could actually spend on other cool stuff. Also, guess what? Vic will now make an early appearance on the bridge in the tutorial level, you know, providing the chip for you to activate your mecha. So, hey, farewell to the grinding for Femme to fix and unlock the mecha you want to play as without any delay. Aside from these changes, we also plan to balance the evolution abilities by buffing some of the minor and rare abilities in the game, giving them a power boost in their initial levels. Of course, those weaker evolution abilities are getting some love, too. Of course, you can get the full grasp of it in our Steam post. Lastly, repping the chances of weapon blueprints showing up in secret rooms to a solid 100%. But yeah, it's not all peaceful and safe. So be prepared for the surprise. Watch out and be careful before you get beat down. But yeah, and no one of the exciting part new changes. We're bringing in, we're bringing a stage four. The last chapter of our story, a temple of oblivion inspired by the Egyptian mythology in stage four. We're tweaking the level design a bit. You no longer go in one single scene and explore. Instead, you enter level four by interacting with four guardian statues. Each would take you to four distinctly designed battling arenas. Of course, we've got new faces there waiting for you, including this Mia Meow. Huh? But yeah. Uh, but yeah, jokes aside, once you complete these four battle arenas, you'll now face the mastermind behind the Dulce base. We don't want to spoil much about it just yet, but hey, we'll reveal more as we go. But apart from the addition of stage four, we're making some changes to the maps by shrinking down the first three levels map a bit. I guess you could anticipate more fights and yeah, just get ready to be more action packed than ever. So on top of that, we're rolling out a new feature on challenge room design. These rooms will randomly pop up on the maps, injecting a bit more variability into your exploration. Inside these challenge rooms are speed and overcoming the challenges directly correlates with the nanites you'll earn. Um, just a heads up using you. So just the monsters are down and can be quite unforgiving. So exercise caution as you navigate through. We're also time for sneaky surprise. We're, we're bringing in two characters from the Dulce base to um, shake things up as boss fights. Any, any guess who we're talking about? Could that be Mr. X, William, or perhaps someone else? Let us know in the comments. Now, let's talk about weapon changes. Despite we have designed over 26 weapons, we do see a phenomenon where most guys stick to one weapon throughout their whole playthrough, which we hope to change and encourage more weapons to be played and some underestimated weapons to shine while well, introducing the concept and design of weapon evolution attributes. Now, keep an eye out as you can stumble upon weapons with these attributes randomly scattered across the map or collect them as rewards after boss fights, as mentioned earlier. The attributes subtly enhance the existing power of each weapon, and we hope this adds a more nuanced and strategic element to the game. Of course, you could always add or place these attributes in the refrigerating room, mix in matching them to create a weapon that's tailor-made for you. And finally, and in the blasting of our video, we're introducing Pocketai, your digital collection book, which will be conveniently placed next to the talent chair. So be sure to check it out when you pass by in the 1.0 patch. This is this is to help you view your game gallery and track your in-game progress. You can easily explore your collection and achievements within the game. It covers everything from weapon details and items to monster info. Convenient, isn't convenient, is it? And that's a wrap for today's video. We've covered everything we want to share today. Thank you all for tuning in. We're new to this as well. So bear with us on any tiny slip ups, but we hope you had a good time with us today. In the next step blog, 
We'll reveal more details on the 1.0 update featuring the new female mecha character and diving deeper into the overarching storyline. Stick around. We'll be back with more. If you enjoyed the video, throw us a like. Thanks so much for hanging out and see you in the next one.